to show you how I've been creating with my brand new finishing line pens. I am crazy mad in love with them. I love them almost as much as I love Italy and mermaids, which is a lot. Thank you for joining me at the Cinque Terre. I think I completely murdered that as usual, but I am trying to pronounce it properly. <laughs> this beautiful region of Italy is on the west coast, uh, up towards the Riviera. It's a beautiful spot. There's five major little towns. Well, you couldn't really call them major towns, but I went there for a holiday and created, I think, in every cafe, uh, on in every little town. That's an exaggeration. But that's how I felt. And in drawing and creating throughout this beautiful part of Italy, I sort of feel like I ingested some of it into my creative soul. On this trip, of course, I did lots of observational drawing and drawing uh, on plein air sketching and urban sketching, drawing what I was looking at. But that's not really where my creative heart sits. For me, that's a challenge and I like to challenge myself. Where I'm happy is drawing from my imagination and that's what's happening here in this beautiful seaside town. A mermaid swam onto my page, which is not unusual. <laughs> I'm using my finishing line pens. This is a set of 10 waterproof, archival, alcohol marker proof, quick drying, light, fast, fantastic sketching pens. There's five brush tips, two micro fines and three angled nibs in there so there's all this variety and they're so light and easy to carry around in they come in a cute little penvelope that has a little snap that matches the lids i've got a sample set on the table so don't look at that but oh they're gorgeous the other thing i'm using <laughs> is a uh, paper towel or serviettes from the uh, cafes of course if there's any little oopsies uh, but also the Peerless watercolours, which are a little flat watercolour uh, from Peerless. And this is the Jane Davenport set. And I've got another video that shows you how I make that little open up palette. And this way I can just create uh, wherever I go. I've got it in a little journal cover on some nice watercolor paper that's pulled out from my hardbound journals and it's just a light little kit that I can just pop in my handbag carry around it's not going to break my arm I hate carrying around a heavy bag and when you're traveling you don't know if you're stepping out of the door for half an hour and going to a little cafe or if you're going to be then traipsing around the universe for the rest of the day you just don't know what's going to be happening so for the bulk of my out and about sketching when I traveled on this trip I mainly took my finishing line pens and I would swap out two pens and I would change this around and then I would put my water brush and a white paint pen one of my paint over pens in that little penvelope that was my pencil case 
And then I've got my little journal in the little journal cover there, which is quite hard wearing. The other essential supply for the artist who is creating while they're traveling is an understanding partner or travel partners <laughs> so that they allow you that little bit of extra time to sit, take the scenery in and draw if you need to. Equally, uh, it's very important not to abuse that and <laughs> take too long to keep it moving. So I try and draw while I'm sitting down. I try and stay in the conversation, drink my nice little drinks, my coffees, have a little bit of dessert, enjoy everything that is there and here we are i'm actually waving goodbye to portofino there which seriously is one of the most beautiful places i've ever been to in my life and as an extra special treat angus and i hired a little speedboat that took us uh, up the coast so we could have a little bit of a look around from uh, Portofino and then back to Rapello, just so we could see the beautiful uh, coastline and the gorgeous little towns. And of course, I took every opportunity I could to draw it. Another challenge that I think is good for you, or I can only speak for myself, so good for me, was very often I would be drawing while I was moving. And that introduces two challenges one well I'm on transport that's moving uh, number one the scenery is changing so if you're drawing something that you're looking at it's going to be changing so you're really going to have to be engaging your observation skills and your memory skills right in that moment because you're kind of having to pick what it is that you're drawing and the second type of movement is you are physically moving there's a tremor there's um, the actual um, in this case the rolling of a boat we're on waves on a train you're moving on a plane you're moving whatever transport you're on so rather than let that frustrate you I try to sink into that movement and kind of get a rhythm going and let it help me draw also I like to draw while I'm walking around. Now, this is probably the hardest of all, but here I am. I'm at an art exhibition in uh, Geneva at the White Palace and trying to capture essence of Albrecht Dürer, who these are tiny, tiny, tiny little prints. The artwork, I to be totally honest, not everything has to appeal to you as an artist. And his artwork, although I can see how accom accomplished it is, how magnificent it is, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't fill me with emotion. But that doesn't mean I can't find moments in there that l elevate my soul and make me want to be a better artist. The turn of an eyelash, this was the turn of a face of this uh, lady, noble lady on a horse. Um, and just the way that Albrecht Dürer signs his name, I it just suits his artwork so well, it's so structural. And then that makes me think is the way that I sign my name. How does that relate to me and other artists and their actual artwork? So it opened up a line of questioning for me. But drawing while you are moving, walking, uh, or as you walk and then draw, walk and draw, that can be a really fun challenge. <laughs> Don't do it in a really crowded museum. Uh, you will get in the way. This was very quiet, so I felt uh, very comfortable just having a sketch. I also love watching other artists at work in a museum, I try not to get in their way if they're trying to draw something or make them feel uncomfortable coming standing over their work because I know how it kind of makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable when people are doing that to me. But it is interesting uh, to see artists. Sometimes you'll even find there is a little chair or a little area where you can sort of be out of the way and create. And you can find those moments. Uh, like I am finding that moment at the White Palace, which was beautiful in Italy. When I'm drawing what I'm looking at, so observational drawing, I try and spend 
more time looking at my subject than at the page and that's another reason why I love my pens is because they dry so quickly they don't smudge if your hand rubs over them or if you have to suddenly pack up so a big crowd of people comes through or your train suddenly arrives or whatever happens you don't close your book and then end up with ink all over the place it's nice having something that dries quickly that's archival does all the right things which is what my finishing line pens do that's why I love them so much. They give me creative freedom. So it's just one less thing I have to concern myself with. I can just enjoy the scenery, enjoy my reaction to it, sink into it, enjoy whoever I'm with or tra if I'm traveling on my own, just completely encompass myself in it, which leaves me free to have as much fun as possible. And I wanted to finish this video this gallery had the squeakiest noisiest leather chairs which we were dying of laughter getting in and out of them and this painting as well as just having a pigeon yo-yoing into the room also had a little basket of dirty laundry I just I loved that I loved that